In this section we're going to look at two examples of evaluating expressions. Um, and so uh, let's start with this first example. We've got negative a plus b and we're evaluating that for a equals negative 17 and b equals negative 52. Now previously um, when we've evaluated expressions I've described the variables as kind of like empty boxes waiting for us to put a number into. And I think that starts that analogy starts to become especially helpful once we start working with negatives. So when you're plugging in the numbers, I think it's really important to, before you do anything else, write down every part of the expression that's there, and then leave a big empty space where you see the letter. So I have negative a up here, so I'm going to have negative and then an empty space. And then I'm going to write down the plus sign. And then I'm going to have an empty space where B should be. Okay. Now, the fact that I am evaluating this for A equals negative 17 means I need to plop negative 17 right down where A used to be. So, even though there's a negative there already, that does not matter. I still need to put negative 17 in this spot. And so I'm going to, in parentheses, put my negative 17. And then I need to put negative 52 in this spot. And since there's a plus sign there, I better put parentheses around this also. As a general rule, if you are plugging a negative into an expression, you're going to almost always want to use parentheses. Um, sometimes it's not necessary, but it'll never it'll never mess things up to put parentheses around your negative. So this is a little bit cramped in here, so let me rewrite it. So we have negative, negative 17, plus negative 52. So just uh, to emphasize this one more time, the fact that there is a negative here simply means that that negative has to come down in the expression when you put the numbers in. And if this happens to be a negative also, that negative needs to come along too. A common mistake people will make is they'll say, oh, okay, good, there's a negative there, um, and I want my a to be negative, and so they'll just have one single negative sign there. But that's the wrong way to think of it. This comes from the expression. This negative comes from what this number is, negative 17. Now, remember, we talked about how to deal with something like this. Remember, we could say that this symbol kind of means the opposite. So what I'm really doing here is I'm taking the opposite of negative 17. Well, what's the opposite of negative 17? 17. And I'm adding negative 52. And then, of course, we have numbers with different signs, so I'm going to subtract the absolute values. Get 35. But of course, I understand that the answer is negative 35, because the negative is on the bigger absolute value. So let's take a look at this example here. We have x plus the absolute value of y plus negative z, and they give us x, y, and z. So in place of x, I want to put negative 57. Now, you can certainly put negative 57 in parentheses. It's not going to hurt anything. But since it's the very first term in the expression, it's not necessary because there are no operation symbols in front of it. Plus, now this is the absolute value of y. So I'm going to have plus the absolute value of whatever y is. Now y happens to be negative 24. So I'll plug negative 24 in there and then plus negative z. So this negative needs to come straight down for the expression. And so I'm leaving a blank spot where z was, and then I know z is supposed to be 42. So I'm going to put that right where z used to be. So um, one thing to really make sure you do is to let the first step always be simply writing everything out. Um, 
by substituting the numbers in for the letters. Don't try to put the numbers in and start the process all at once. So for example, we know that the absolute value of negative 24 is 24, but don't try to do that at the same time that you're plugging it in. So write out exactly what you have when you plug the numbers in and then worry about evaluating things in the next step. So like I said, the next thing we're going to do is understand that this should just be positive 24 because absolute values turn negatives into positives. And again, remembering our um, commutative property of addition, I'm going to just rearrange this so that my negatives are together first. You don't have to take this step. You could just go from left to right. But I like doing this because adding is always easier than subtracting, in my opinion. So I'm going to add my, negative, uh, my absolute value of my negative numbers. So I've got negative 99 plus 24. And then I will subtract 24 from 99 and get 75. But of course, the negative is on the bigger absolute value, so negative wins. So my answer is negative 75.